This is the One Rod, One Reel Urban Dallas Fishing Challenge sponsored by Mystery Tackle Box, baby. Let's get into it. So we found ourselves out here in Urban Dallas with just one reel, SLX DC, pumped to throw this with a two-piece travel rod and our mystery tackle box. This is this month's mystery tackle box. We're about to have some fun throwing a couple baits, minus the pliers, I threw those in there. We've got the XO ribbon worms, perfect for your Texas rigs. We even have some hooks to throw them on for Ott. Love that size, perfect, perfect. We also have some big bite baits. Looks like swim baits. They're like a black and blue color. That could go good in this pond. You might even, you could even do these weightless Texas rigged, or you could add a weight. You could throw these on a jig head. You could do a weighted belly hook. Lots of options with these guys right here to get them swimming, just depending on what the depth is that you need. You can vary up the weight accordingly. Then we've got some craws. These guys can make really good finesse. You might throw these guys on like a, uh, a Ned rig. I would do just like a little mushroom head jig with these guys, and I think you could have some luck. Also, you could throw them on a finesse jig uh, if you match the colors which might be a little tricky so throw it on a finesse jig and have some luck there even is a jig in today's box this is the bankroll jig 3 8 ounce and uh, looks pretty good black and blue definitely a staple black and blue you'll throw in those stained waters normally go with something more natural for those crystal clear waters that's just kind of like the the go-to at first I tend to not care as much about that I will throw either or in clear or stained water but looking at the pond from here it doesn't look crystal clear we'll see what's in store for us but we have that jig as well as this guy right here never thrown this Bagley Balsa Wake 1 this is a mystery tackle box exclusive and I love mystery tackle box for identifying new lures that I would have never picked up at the store and given new stuff a try end up falling in love with it and then buying more of these lures after the fact so this guy dives um, up to one foot I believe it says so he's a shallow diver and we have this yappa frog it's almost like a look at that big lip right there for big pops on that water at the top and it looks like the legs are trimmed down a little bit shorter than some of these other frogs you might buy from the store. Uh, this thing looks pretty cool. It's got an interesting color. I'm pretty stoked to throw this. We might not have any luck right now being 11-11 on this fine Tuesday afternoon, but let's see what we can do with our uh, one setup here and tie a couple different things on. And this one's gonna be a challenge. All I have is fluorocarbon line. This is a top water lure. The density of that fluorocarbon allows it to sink. So we're gonna see how this stuff works out. And uh, maybe the bite is on today. Maybe nobody wants to bite. We're gonna see what happens. Let's get after it. Okay, now as bad as I wanna just get to fishing like you guys probably wanna see, I've got to put everything together. So we'll get these things rigged up. Two piece flare rod. What is this? A 7.2, 7.2 medium heavy? Fantastic. That's all we need right there. Look at those matching colors. Wow. Stunning. Catch some Mondos. So this is the number one step whenever you put a, a reel on a new rod <laughs> is going through this eyelet right here. If you don't go through that eyelet, what's going to happen is as you're reeling your line back in and you've casted, the line is just going to go on one spot of the spool. It's all going to be on the right side or the left side because if you go through that eyelet right there, that's what keeps it um, dispersed across that spool evenly as you bring the line back in. So make sure you do that when you're setting your reels up on your, on your rods. And let's go ahead and go through each individual eyelet. And I'm thinking we'll tie on that crankbait, that moving bait first. And then I'm real excited to uh, throw a Texas rig with that XO ribbon worm and those hooks. And then we will go from there. You know, kind of start off with the confidence baits. Uh, for me, crankbaits have always been good, especially those lighter colors that I feel like really have that shimmer and shine as they swim through the water. It's going to be a, a good old time because I love this box. It's got a top water. It really has all bases loaded. I'm just thinking to myself, if they don't hit this one moving bait, you know, you might not, if, if you can't catch anything on this right here, you probably won't get a bite on the chatter bait. You probably won't get a bite on things of that nature because, uh, you know, sometimes they're just looking down. They're, they're, they're down on the bottom. They're not looking up towards the surface where this guy's going to be, you know, only diving up to one foot in depth and, uh, and wanting to go after that meal on the move. They might be in the slow moving type of mood. So you got to finesse with that Texas rig. Last thing real quick. I actually have some new weights that just got shipped in from Wu Tungsten. Love their weights. I'm going to go ahead and try and find a quarter ounce or a, what is this never chip eighth ounce that that could work but it's pretty windy today i might need a, something a little bit heavier bam quarter ounce i think that's going to be the appropriate weight today to get me going down despite that wind but then also 
nothing too crazy heavy because I think this is a shallow pond. But we'll put this in our mystery tackle box and we're going to utilize those hooks and XO ribbons with these weights right here. We just have literally the one little mystery tackle box on us and we've got our one rod and reel. It's something a little bit different than I normally do so I'm ready to have fun. I'm traveling light today. Y'all know I normally have my big old honk and tackle backpack on. I have normally got a bunch of rigs. I'm talking about four or five combos in my hand and uh, I get it done. But Today's a little bit different. Look at this spot. Mm, extra juicy. There's kind of like a, an inlet. Sometimes water flows down that and the fish will hang out over there. We got a point over here and there's even some shade for me to fish from. Man, all right, let's get this thing in the water. Let's get this crank moving. This crank is barely going subsurface. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna tell you all a little secret. Cast along the bank. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sink the rod tip down into the water. I've got that floral carbon line that's gonna sink. Now I don't even see this lure anymore. It's now subsurface. So it's gonna be down a little bit lower in the water column where I think we might get that bite. Yep, 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 we got one. We got one. A few minutes in, you guys. Oh my gosh. Smallest bass I've ever caught out of this pond. First catch of the MTB slam right there. Bada bing, bada boom. That's how you do it, ladies and gents, with the crankbait. Just cover some water, walk the bank, get that crank in new places. And uh, I'm not going to try and catch a bigger one on this crankbait. And the reason is because I think we'll get a big one. But let's try some different lures real fast out of the box. I bet we can actually get a bigger one. That's always the challenge with these MTB challenges. I changed my mind. Basically, I know that the fish will eat this now. I could keep throwing it and probably link up with a big one even, but I want to try and complete this slam. So let's go ahead and tie something else on despite the fact that this works. And if we don't get any fish on these next couple lures, we'll toss this bad boy back on and I bet you we'll get big Bertha. Next up guys is gonna be the Red Shad 7 inch ribbon tail worm by Catchco. This is the Exo ribbons as well as the Mustad 4 aught It's not a worm hook like I traditionally throw. This is more like a wide gap hook, I believe. And anyways, we're throwing one of these guys. Step one, grab your weight, feed that onto the line, that bullet style weight, and you will, uh, that's the start of your Texas rig. After you get that weight on your line, just free, just flowing freely, you go ahead and tie your knot of choice to your hook. That weight's gonna help get the worm down into the strike zone or whatever soft plastic you rig up on your Texas rig. It's gonna help drive it down to the bottom there where sometimes those fish are hanging out and only wanna go for stuff. Otherwise, you can even go weightless and let it really drift down nice and slow. I like to do that when there's no wind. It's gonna be easier casting something that's weightless with no wind and also it uh, it's gonna sink, it's gonna actually sink. When you throw a wacky rig or something very light without a weight and these high winds, it pretty much just stays on top of the water and that's, that's normally not what you're going for with a weightless Texas rig. It's typically, when you're swimming it through the water or even bouncing it along the bottom, the hook is gonna be in this orientation right here, meaning if you want your plastic to be right side up, if you want like, like let's say this worm, we wanted the red to be like the belly or the underside, which I think is how this is designed, you would put the red or that bottom side towards the hook when you start your Texas rig. This is something I don't hear a lot of people talking about too often, but like sometimes you want a certain color to be on top and a certain color to be on bottom, right? That lighter flash maybe on the bottom so they look up and see it, that darker color on the top. It mimics what the bait might actually look like in real life. So we've got the bottom of that bait facing towards the hook. We just get the nose on there, feed it up to the top of the hook. Right about here when you hit that uh, corner, you, you give that plastic a 180 and you feed it right up onto the top of the hook. I even covered that knot a lot of times. Then the hook is going to rest inside the worm essentially like this. That way you're going to be completely weedless. But, and what I, what I mean by weedless is you won't be catching a lot of grass on this hook because it's going to be dug inside the body of this worm. What we're going to need to do is puncture the worm right here. So we grab the worm, puncture it right here, go up through the body to where it is exposed. Then we grab that worm, we almost pull forwards a little bit, and then sink that hook into the body. Boom, now you have a weedless setup. You're gonna be cruising right by the rocks, the grass, the trees, not worry about getting hung up, but you'll get all the action out of your plastic, and when the fish goes to grab a hold of it, they'll grab a hold and they'll get hooked. That is the beauty of the Texas rig. And uh, if I drop that weight down, now you can see that weight is gonna help us get to the bottom. I'm gonna vary it up a little bit, and just because that last uh, bite was on a moving bait, 
I'm gonna even swim this in for a few casts and just see if we get hit while we're consistently reeling this worm. Cast one out deep, see what happens. Oh, I almost thought we had a hit right there on the drop, but I think I'm just, it's my imagination. Ooh, got smacked right here by the bank. Oh my gosh, they like the moving stuff, you guys. Let's cast it back out there and just swim it right up to the bank. Wow. Come on, baby, grab hold. We gotta get a good fight for YouTube right here. Come on. Oh, I casted onto the bank over there. This spot does look juicy. Oh my God, a big one just grabbed it. A big one just grabbed it. Oh my God, that was a big one, you guys. Oh, I really did not set the hook. We were just swimming them slow right along the bank. Oh my gosh, that, that's why I didn't get him. I didn't set the hook, I was excited. And by the time he started digging with it and I thought he was hooked good at that point anyways. So that's why I didn't try and like give him a little slack and then almost reset the hook, if you will. Oh, fuck. Just got hit again and I told myself I'm not missing the hook set. So I set the hook and I missed the fish. There he, oh, fudge. Okay, this is getting ridiculous. Come on, man, grab it, grab it. No, no. I'm gonna let him eat it. Bam, got him. Oh, you are not the big one though. Not the big one. Gosh darn it. I'm being thrown through the ringer over here at this pond. The big ones wanna get off the hook and the little guys will bite it. Mm. We didn't lose the worm, it just fell onto the ground. I'm gonna get it, let's release this guy. Okay, so the front of the worm is torn up. Let's tear that down. Tear that down one section. And let's get this thing fed back up onto the hook and back in there. The big ones are here. I just haven't caught them. Where's the Mondos? Where's the Mondos? We are about to hit the strike zone. Let's get bit cruising. There, there we go. Go over that brush. Let it sink. Yeah, no, that wasn't a bite. That was just twigs. All right, all right. We're having fun. Oh, bites. He's on. Oh, try that again. Was on. We got bites on the drop, guys. He's got it right now. So you crank that down and go for that hook set. Boom. Oh, yanked him right up and over. That's what we're talking about, boys. Yep, yep, yep. All right, y'all. We got him back in the water. Now we are going to tie on the black and blue jig with one of my favorite jig trailers. This is going to be the Guggenbaits Crack and Crawl in black and blue flake to kind of go with that jig. Match that's right there. And then we've got a Wasabi GoPro battery. I usually buy these on Amazon. There's like a three pack plus a triple charger for real cheap. And that way you've just got a bunch of batteries on you and they work just as good as the GoPro ones. And uh, now we're rigged up and ready to go for another sesh. Let's go ahead and switch you guys over to the GoPro right now. And I'm actually, I got to put it on that looping mode. That's what I like, five minute intervals. All right, 4K, 24 frames a second. Let's get to fishing this jig. Now next up, depending on how long the hook is on your jig or how long the skirt is, depends on if I'm gonna throw the whole crack and crawl or rip a section off. I think one section might actually do the trick. Now you'll see, as we let this thing hang, the skirt's not really gonna interfere with the action from these claws and that's what you want. Yet, the claws aren't hanging way down here because we have an extra section on, so this is just about perfect. Definitely the heaviest lure we've thrown. There would be no problem casting this thing all the way across this pond. I honestly might just swim this thing because like I say, they've been going after the moving baits and those cracking claw claws just really flutter. Typical jig fishing, which is where you'll let it sink to the bottom, right? Let it sink to the bottom, make sure you don't have any slack, then give it a few pops. That's like how I typically fish it, almost like a, just like a Texas rig. And then you'll get those hits when a bass comes up and grabs it off the bottom. But today they've kind of proven they like it moving, so we'll give it that consistent reel and we'll see if it can attract a big fish. Oh, a little bass just creeped up. There he is, there he is. That's a decent one, that's a good one. There we go, there we go. The jig's gonna bring in the bigs, boys. That's what I'm talking about. Mystery tackle box hooking us up with a solid jig that we didn't even have to pop on the bottom today. You can, once again, identify how these fish are eating and what they're biting. What are you doing, kid? What are you doing, Daniel? All right, let me just, um, hmm, biggest fails of all time. Okay, I was just giving that a consistent reel 
and those uh, little claws were fluttering and he swam right up to it and smacked it. That's not two pounds, but that's definitely a healthy fat pound and a quarter, I would say. Let's get a, uh, should we get a smooth release? We've been throwing them all back in the water. What happens if I just ease him back on in? This guy's gonna be a bucking bronco. I already know, he's already, he's ready to go. He's ready to go. Oh, slow and steady wins the race. I was just about to say, that's enough of the jig. I'm gonna put it down and then I realized I still have these. I totally forgot about these. So I'm gonna put this on the jig and throw it swimming and see if we can't get one. I don't know why I didn't do that from the start. It's because I love the Kraken Cross so much and they work, but this guy right here should do well also. Guys, look at that thing right there. I don't know if this is like a hybrid. I'm not the best with understanding the jig heads myself. Uh, it could be like a swim jig essentially or a hybrid because it has that tapered head which I think can cut through the water. But then also it's got a, like a flat side right there, right? So you can see you'd be able to pop him along the bottom. And uh, so it's kind of a toss up on, I'm just gonna use this jig as a swim jig today because I think I'm gonna shorten the swim bait down a little bit. Other than that, I think this thing is good to go. It looks pretty sick. There we go. I'm no rocket scientist, but this thing looks like it should get eaten. Let me check this presentation real quick, see how it swims. How's that tail doing? Oh yeah, it flutters. Oh yeah, this is this is golden. That's a sure catch. What's up here? Maybe they want to hit this thing on the top pond. Oh, we just had a bite. Oh, just, just got him, got him. Oh, there we go. Oh no. Still got a couple more lures to go through guys, but I have to run, so maybe I can finish this video a little bit later today. Left the last pond, and about an hour later, we find ourselves at another little honey hole, you guys. We've got the same swim jig tied on, and we are gonna cast right here. This water is crystal clear. I don't know if they'll hit that black and blue, but we're about to find out, so let's go ahead and cast in here. First cast at the second pond. I see a big bass. Where did he go? That was a two to three pounder. I see him. Oh. Here we go. Oh, this one's on it. This one's swimming after it. Yeah, they're, they're everywhere. They're just hanging out. This one's big. Oh, that one's big. They don't want this. Damn, what can I tie on? They're like all here. A big one just chased all the way up to the bank. All right guys, so here's what we've done. We've got some 10th ounce jig heads. These are just mushroom jig heads, essentially for like a Ned rig, and that's exactly what we did. We kind of put these little craws that came in the MTB box on one of those hooks right there. And we're gonna see if this little finesse setup can't get these big guys attention. I'm gonna chunk this in there a few times and see what happens. Oh, here's one. Oh, oh, we got, oh, oh, we got a fish right off the bat. We got a fish as soon as it hit the water. <laughs> wow. Okay. All right, we'll take that as soon as it hit the water. Dang, you just gotta find what they want. And the other one I think was on his way over to it. I literally, I saw one, I cast it, I was like, oh, there's one. And, and, and I was waiting for him to swim over to it. I was gonna inch this craw over to his face and this guy grabbed it before I could even think. And I'm like, my line's moving, Pooh, I got one. I thought it was a bluegill or something, but no, full size, awesome. Devin was right, she called me over here because she saw this little guy going up for dragonflies. So they are like looking up. He was pounced on this thing as soon as I pitched it and it hit the water. Come here, let's get him, let's get him. Watch this. All right guys, you saw us catch fish on the Bagley Balsa Wake, that crank that we threw right off the bat had a catch, and then we had that big one even wake up to it over here at the second pond. We also had the Yappa Frog that we didn't break out, 
Uh, I just don't think that coming out here midday is going to get it done with that frog, especially with fluorocarbon line. But trust me, throw that on some braid and you will get some catches. We have the Biospawn Exo Ribbon Worm, where we caught that good one. The Big Bite Baits Cane Thumper, that's that blue swim bait that we put on the jig. And we didn't have anything chase it here. We did have that fish on at the last pond at that second spot there at the top of the hill, but he came off. So almost landed a fish on that. We had the bankroll jig, which we used that crack and crawl with. We also had the little Z-Man crawls. This was the last thing we threw. We got multiple fish on this thing. We're just switching it up right now. We're kind of in that transition. We're throwing fall finesse. And then we also had that wire hook that we used the EXO ribbon on. So literally we caught a fish on everything out of the box except for the top water, which we might be able to capitalize on this evening. Otherwise, that is going to wrap up this video. Uh, we had a fish on on the swim bait. Couldn't secure him with that jig, but that's okay. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Peace out. <gasps>